the meeting to order. Uh, all board members are present and accounted for. If so inclined, would you please stand, place our flag over in this direction as we say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, uh, we're the one we put out for you. <laughs> it's okay. I would be lost in this room. So. Okay, we have one item on our special board meeting this evening, and that is the tennis court discussion. Uh, I would look for a motion to approve the agenda as shown. I'll make a motion. Motion by Kurt. I'll second. second. Seconded by Rob. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. So, we don't have special meetings very often here, and I think we can probably, some of us can count them on one hand. They, uh, they come only at select times. Um, during the course of the evening, we'll have discussion among board members and information from a couple of our employees uh, to help us just get as much info as we possibly can. There will be no public forum this evening. We will save that for our 626 meeting our June 26th time. And uh, just as a word, uh, at the public forum time, when it is time, we would ask that if people want to speak to that, they coordinate their efforts so we don't have 20 people speaking and maybe gets redundant from time to time. So if and when that time comes, just two or three speakers would be great. At that time, we'll also take a vote. There'll be no voting tonight, just discussion. Um, Jerry's going to lead us in facility conversation in just a moment. We had a facility meeting where, with, and I think that kind of directs why we're here this evening. But I do want to address the city just a bit. Um, I've used the term non-committal when it comes to city and city politics uh, in reference to the tennis courts. To me, non-committal means you haven't committed to a thing. But I think that's fair to say that we had a meeting with them, and if we're giving them nothing to discuss, like an option, they have every right not to be committal to anything. We haven't given them more than one topic. We haven't given them alternatives. So if that, in fact, comes from me, that there seems to be some conversation that the city has been negative about it, I apologize for that, because it may very well come from me. What we want to do more than anything else is is have a good working relationship with the city or a continuance of that working relationship, which has been excellent through the years. So uh, we need to throw that out. Um, this evening, I, I would like us to start with some facility conversation by Jerry as to what developed at that meeting, which kind of precipitates why we're here. I'm also going to ask Dave, um, our operations man, and Jake, to have some discussion about the need for tennis courts, uh, Dave, the funding or monetary commitments that we would be looking at based on what options we might have. So I thought we'd start with Jerry because the reason why we're here is the facility committee and probably no clear consensus that came out of that meeting. Jerry? Yeah, if, if I can even back up further than the last meeting, I'll even go back as far as 20. 15, mm -hmm. about when this conversation actually originated, yep. and Rob was actually at facilities back then as well. Um, we knew there was issues at the tennis courts. There was severe cracking and sinking, um, especially on the south end, four courts. Um, we did a walkthrough, Rob and I, and Dave and Jake, <coughs> and we knew at that time something needed to be done. and. and Really, the root cause at that time was we were losing a lot of that court because of the retaining wall and the way that was all installed. So the original fix was to remove the retaining wall and and try to get that fixed. Was there? I, I can't remember. Did we do some patching then, filling in some of the cracking? No, no. Just did the retaining wall. And we took a little bit of the exterior of the asphalt away where the retaining wall was because it was just collapsing. So we just cut her off. Right. Right. 
um, since. So obviously since nothing's really been invested into the tennis courts on the upkeep, hence the way they are now is for the most part unplayable. The four courts, the four north courts are your best courts. I don't know, I wouldn't consider them being competitive level courts. Um, which has since moved us forward to several tennis court meetings over the past six months, for sure. Actually, it starts back in 2015, but it's over the last six months, it's really picked up uh, headway on it. Um, so there was a facilities meeting, whole oh, three, two weeks ago. It's all dated, and then I think it's the date on that. Uh, six one. Um, and there are there are a number of people. There's the facilities committee is, essentially was involved, and there's probably seven or eight people in that group. And as you see in front of you, there were really three options laid out. <coughs> um, and I won't say it was a per se a vote taken, but really the consensus in the room was really a split consensus. That's probably the best way I could put it. Um, you know, obviously everybody would like to see it fixed. Obviously the other um, elephant in the room is the funding. And a big part of the issue with some of the funding is if, if we're looking at doing essentially a temporary repair with no warranty on it for $70,000, it's to a lot of them it's hard to justify when we just um, reduced 88500 in expenditures to balance the budget. So that's where a lot of discrepancy is. We're, if, we're take, we're, if we're cutting our budget, to suffice our, or if we're cutting our expenditures to suffice the budget, how can we possibly afford <coughs> to spend $70,000 with no kind of guarantee on it? Um, so that, that was one of the options. The other option is, you know, can we afford the 10000 a year for tennis courts, $70,000 for the next seven years? until they can be resurfaced again. So we're going to have really a short-term investment with no guarantee, and then seven years from now or five years from now, we're going to have to invest another 240000 or 80000 probably do more than that then to redo the whole works. Um, <clears throat> that was one of the others. Um, you know, I, we know there's some grading issues. Um, and one of the concerns was, you know, that elementary school, they, they fundraised $36,000 on their own without coming to the school for a new playground that 500 kids a day use. And essentially, tennis is 22 kids, give or take, right, Jake? Yep. <clears throat> um, so there was, there was some big concerns there for obvious reasons. Um, and then one of the other options would would we not do some resurfacing this year in the parking lots and move that funding to the tennis courts? Um, and I don't know that that's such a good option personally because you start getting away from that and you're, then your parking lots and your, your roadways start getting bad and that just costs, just will continue to increase massively as we found out through Red Wing. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so that's really, that's really what brought us to this meeting today is to have more discussion on, on tennis courts. Um, what I'd like to do is be as orderly as we can and listen to uh, the people we call on and then we can ask a variety of questions after that. So, Dave, I ask you just to speak to the costs and what brings us here. I think um, originally we talked about a total demolition and rebuild and now there's at least some conversation that we'll be able to have workable tennis courts for the next few years with a resurfacing project. I, can you speak to any of that? Yeah, well, like Jerry had stated, this started a couple years ago. The, you know, the original problem was the collapsing retaining wall, which we had to repair first before we even considered doing any resurfacing. Uh, we did that, we took care of that problem. Um, and when we originally had got some quotes, we were looking at, uh, you know, just getting some budgetary numbers for the spring to start looking at what we were going to do. We got those ballpark numbers. Uh, it was done in January, so we weren't holding them to anything. Um, but of 
course, other things came up, other repairs. We had a major construction project. Um, so by the time we were serious about getting those bids again, uh, we had the contractors come back out and take a very close look, detailed, uh, uh, put together a detailed proposal. And at that time is when we realized that the courts were in a little rougher shape than we had originally thought. Um, the gentleman that came out, we had a couple different companies came out, come out. We called, I think, four, at least four. Two came out, and uh, they were more than happy to do the job, but at, at the same time, they were also informing us that they were in really bad shape. They wanted to be clear that they weren't going to guarantee anything with the size of the cracking and with the pooling happening, uh, the water holding in some of the areas, uh, but it could be done. Um, they always said it could be resurfaced, it, you know, at the cost of around $70,000. We also have problems with the posts. I want that to be clear, too. It's not just the court. It's also the posts that go into the ground that are bent and heaving and having some issues. So that cost was part of that proposal. And um, uh, with looking at the, the inflated price, uh, which, you know, the original price was already uh, something to be concerned about, not, now it's getting even higher. Um, and the, the comment I got from both these companies, which are well-known, reputable companies that do this all over, they said, well, boy, uh, you're already into it for 70 if you do it this way. You're probably halfway there just replacing them, just speaking in general terms. They didn't know what the amount would be at that time. So that's when I asked them, well, can you get me a, a, a quote together for complete replacement? If that's, because I figured the question would come up if we had the option. That's where I got the, the quote for a complete demolition. I didn't pursue several quotes on the complete demolition at that point. We were already having trouble discussing and coming up with the money for the 70, 75,000. Um, I surely wasn't going to have contractors come in for anywhere from 280 to 300,000 up when it just, to me, didn't seem like an option. And, um, you know, I, I just, I, just wanted, I just wanted something in writing so we, we knew somewhat what it would be. Um, at one point, I, I, to be honest with you, I just didn't think we were going to be able to come up with the money. I, I thought it was kind of uh, an issue that was going away. Uh, we were worried about other projects, and it's kind of resurfaced, and, you know, here we are. Uh, we did have another gentleman come out that says that he can do the repair. Uh, he met with me and Jake. Um, we both liked the, the, the methods that he had for the crack repair. Um, it seemed like a, you know, it would make the, the courts playable. The reason we never had the option for just doing half the courts was because of our teams competing. They still wouldn't be able to do home matches. And that was really our, you know, a, a big part of why we want to get these done is not only for the public to have nice courts, but for the home t tennis team to be able to have home matches instead of having all away matches. So we didn't really use that as an option of just doing half of them, um, just because it really wasn't going to fix the complete problem. So looking at uh, the, the new proposal that uh, the gentleman uh, gave Jake, um, it's about $75,000. Um, it, it replaces a couple of the posts, but not all of them. Um, and it's, once again, it's, I, I guess I consider it somewhat of a temporary fix. We're going to have to revisit either resurfacing in the near future, or if we continue to have any settling problems or any issues, we may be looking at uh, complete demolition a at some point. I don't know. It, it depends on Mother Nature, the weather, uh, rain, freezing. I, I just don't know. Uh, either way, uh, as you're going forward, a plan needs to be put in place for if you're going to continue to resurface, keep them as is, or if you're going to Look at the option of complete demolition and starting over again. Uh, yeah. Can I ask for a little clarification? The number one question I'm asked is, why have you always earmarked forty-five thousand dollars? That comes from that original two thousand fifteen. Correct. Bid. Um, it was January. A lot of it was covered, but I just really want everyone to understand why. I don't know tennis courts, but that's why I plugged that number in. Um, it's always been forty-five thousand because that's what we were told in two thousand fifteen. It is in that red book. Um, which yeah, is why we got that, that exactly. quote originally, to mm -hmm. get that number yep. to budget it. Yep. Okay, I just wanted that clarity out there, because it probably is the number one question I'm asked. Is there any warrant to it, the, the last person to look at them? 
No. Still no warranty. All, all vendors said the same thing. You're not going to get a warranty on this with the condition of the course. Let's, um, let's jump to Jake. And I, I, one of the questions or one of the statements that has been made is our tennis team isn't very big. And I contend that there's other users besides that, which makes it a little bit different. But I don't know that for sure. Can you, can you uh, talk a little bit about users of the courts? Yeah, I mean, there's, we have our tennis team, obviously, that uses it uh, through the fall. Um, we do tennis lessons throughout the summer. we got a couple of different coaches who offer tennis lessons in the summer. And, not, and then not to mention the, the um, group of adults who use it, oftentimes in the mornings or at night, um, will be out there and playing. Um, I think Paul mentioned that they've actually moved off of them as well because of the condition of them. They'll drive to Red Wing. Um, so it has been used as much there either. But there was a, a large community group who was using them. Um, and you see kids out there a lot. You know, oftentimes, sometimes when I come to these meetings, there's kids out there playing. And, um, and they're lit. And, yeah, and Fayette uses them often, whether it's for tennis or for the um, other pickleball they play out there and some other activities they play out in those courts too. So. Okay. Um, I, I'd like to open it up to the uh, to the general board here for any questions or statements. Kurt, my first question is: When we look at option two, guys, when it says, "Can we afford ten thousand dollars a year to have the tennis courts up to seventy thousand seven for seven years?" Is that we're expecting to put ten thousand dollars into it each year for seven no, years? That's right? just yeah. one of those things that a statement that was made at the okay. facility meeting. Okay. Uh, we would have to pay for it up front. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Thank what, you. What's the difference between option two and option three on this either? Uh, option two is just kind of the discussion of, you know, do we hold off? Option three would be to move forward with the, the resealing. Option two is hold off. We made $85,000 worth of cuts. Hold off on them. Um, so they're actually very different. I guess do hold off on doing it. So it's option one, one option two. Thing. Option one would be the recommendation that's currently on, um, the, on the table right now, which is uh, the girls all playing away games or meets. Is that what they call it? Meets? Um, so, uh, option one is what's currently on the, doing nothing. well, and then m waiting a year, maybe people can fundraise, um, you know, give everyone kind of some time to, to fundraise some of those things. Is there a possibility, and I don't know, Jerry, with the committee, can there be a possible option four where, what is the least amount we need to do to make them playable? I know the surface is lifting, but if you're to have someone come in and just blow up the cracks and fill them in, and that's it, you know. Yeah. You can't do that. The, the, the lowest possible option are the options we're presenting, and that's because the surface that's below it is peeling and coming up. It's very dangerous. That's too dangerous. Yep, so that's not an option. This last guy actually said the peeling is, is his bigger More issue true. that he has than the cracking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Which, which I agree with. I think yeah. that is. I mean, yeah. you could play around the cracks, but that peeling. What does it take to lift that up? I'm mean, just questioning. What does it take to, to lift that up? A lot of places it's loose, but coming with a, a scraper of some kind to, to lift that? There's or? pressure washing. There's actual sanding of sanding it off. There's a few different options okay. um, depending on which uh, company and what they prefer to do. Some say that the sanding maybe leaves swirl marks and stuff people don't like. Um, it's preference on how they want to get it off yeah. um, as long as it comes off. So you can, you know, prep is 90% of the game here, being able to prep the surface to have a good surface put back on top of it. Yeah. We can't go down to that last surface because that's terrible underneath that. That's why you, it's been resurfaced already, correct? Yes. So um, we've got a $75,000 bid. Some time ago when we were doing Westido, that money was generally earmarked for those tennis courts. We run into a compressor problem. We take 20 grand right off the top of that. But in my mind, we had $45,000 that was committed toward whatever was necessary for those courts. Am I mistaken? Is that Are you saying we have 45,000 45, earmarked in the budget for the courts right that now? That was with the sale of Wistito. Of, of Wistito, 45,000 of it was set aside for the tennis courts. So that's still funds we have even after the That's vote. correct. I'm carrying them over. I'm, I'm holding them where they're at. Then we have um, an offer by the fire department for, with a donation. Uh, Oh, Correct, okay yeah. yes. Right. <laughs> of of $2,500. So we're close to two thirds of the total that we need. Now, we haven't had any in depth conversation with 
with the city, but yet I might as well throw out an opinion. My opinion is that we're not just a, a school only on situations like this. The city, the people come to use our facility. We go out there and we tell them when we get, when we get a new field house that it's user friendly, even if sometimes it isn't. Um, so we ask that of the community and now I, my opinion is we should seriously consider paying that back at some level. Um, I think we've got uh, the majority of our funds. It doesn't mean they're, you know, we don't have other priorities, but it isn't like we haven't earmarked that money in that location already. We just have to find an opportunity to find more. Like the city, you know, budgetary things are, are crucial, but I think we made a commitment at some point in time. So now you can throw darts this way. No? Well, I think, you, like you said before, we need to give the city what our expectations or whatever our request would be, and I think um, having them pay a third is, is fair because the community is using it as much as the students, as much as the school. And the community members shouldn't have to drive to Red Wing to play tennis. I mean, that's when we have these courts built, is about the understanding that it would be for the community as well as the school. I know the city contributed that. I don't know the amount or the ratio but 50,000 was that half or what, or what was the ratio? Uh, 50,000 of 250 okay. it's in the red book but okay so, so. I guess we need to determine how much we would need to ask the city for or they won't act on it one of the reasons why we're here and we had to hold a special meeting is that we've got some time constraints here we have to make decisions about whether the team that particular group that uses it, the tennis team, um, is going to play all their away matches, or do we have time to get us on the schedule for a resurfacing? So it's something that we do need to deal with. And with the city as a, a possible player, we're asking them to jump into the pool with us right away. I'm not, sh I'm not sure they're prepared to do that, but at the same time, to get a commitment that yes, we're interested in helping out would sure go a long way toward toward being able to get the project done. Uh, I just think by the first of by the first of July, we need to know something. You know, when we look at if they're not gonna be able to play on it now, Jake, for competition, is it safe for them to even practice on? That's a very good question. You know, I mean yeah. that's seems like that's you know you know, that can be a liability too. Yeah. Yeah. So are, are we set that they have to play away games next year? Is that you know? I talked to everybody on the schedule. Said this is a possibility. We might have to play at your place, um, so they're aware of it. I haven't officially moved it yet, but um, it's right now it's our only option. So long shot. We need a couple of twenty seven five. What? So we do, but very very rarely do we get a bid that doesn't have an up along the way. I don't know if we put any contingency monies in a project you're saying we've only they're not going to they're not going to fix all the standards we certainly would want all those that's in the bid the, the fixing poles. all the poles oh, that's in the bid no the new the new no. bid um that gentleman thought that just that's what a couple of them needed yeah. to be fixed yeah. the original them. bid was resurfacing and replacing all of them once again it's a it's a kind of a band-aid to be able to get through to get it operational and not not have the cost go up anymore. This 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 particular individual's resurfacing is a little bit more than the original bids by about five thousand dollars, five or six thousand dollars. But um, I think me and Jake both agree we really liked the way that he did the crack filling. The method that he was using looked superior to what we've seen before and, and looked in our eyes a little more permanent um, and would probably last a lot longer. So, um, of course, the question is, is when it comes to seven years from now, how do you redo that? I, I guess we don't know. You know, we keep talking about a Band-Aid, and with any of our facilities, I mean, a tennis court's supposed to be resurfaced every seven years anyways, or five to seven years, just like a track. I mean, we really don't have a plan in place for that right now anyway, so we do need to invest in these things. So it's not like we're throwing 70, 70 grand at this right now just to do it again in a couple more years. You'd have to do that either way. Maybe not 70 grand, it might be 40 grand, maybe 45 grand, but um, it's part of having these when things. When was you know. the last time it was resurfaced? 
was before my time here, and I started in 09. Uh, 2007 yeah. was the last resurfacing. They, they did crack filling and resurfacing. So you're at 10. So I understand. Three years over what they yeah, so we do, and that's part of the reason why it's in such bad shape. Um, just so I understand the process we're talking about. Uh, filling in the cracks and then putting down what another inch or two on top of what exists for the resurfacing. What what exactly are they doing? They would take it down. They would cut yeah. the, the top layer off, yeah. they could, okay, fill remove, the cracks. Remove the layer on top that's peeling and coming up. Okay. They would do that process. When you say layer, the asphalt repair. or just the paint? Just, just it wouldn't, they're not taking the asphalt off. Okay, just no. the covering. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, they'll do their crack filling mm -hmm. process. And once that's done, they'll resurface over the top of everything again. Okay, to, so. d don't know the, I doubt it's that thick. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's a paint type process. It's specifically for tennis court. So it's not really thick. So the resurfacing is not asphalt, resurfacing is a new paint. Correct. And the 280 is taking all the asphalt away, re-putting down the asphalt, and then repainting. Correct. Plus the surface, subsurface too, right? For yeah, repacking, Re repacking totally repairing, yeah. um, and putting down an, a completely new surface. And then after that, um, after that cures, then they would put on a, a whole new, we'll call it a painted surface, to make your courts and make your lines and stuff like that. Why does the number seven keep popping out all the time? There was an email going around about a seven year warranty there was a seven year conversation here. What does that number mean? The only thing seven year for me is uh, the average time that you need to resurface. Yeah. That's the only thing that I know. I mean, yeah. I, I know between me and Jake, we, we've never said anything about a seven year warranty because uh, that would be a, that'd be a very difficult thing to get. I think that's what you're- Talk to that lady that does the grants. Uh, she's so knowledgeable. Um, she said anytime it's a raised surface, you're always gonna run into issues sooner than a flat surface that was kind of pre-done and, and not gonna be around water and things like that. Trees kind of overhanging. She talks about longevity being, you know, different years, but seven is kind of the golden standard. But if, if on a lower surface and a, a non-raised surface, um, that's all man-made, all of that, you know, has been brought in. Yep, that whole area was built up. <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, was that 17 years ago? I think something like that, yeah. It held out pretty darn good. I mean, we, considering how long it's been, it held out pretty darn good. You know, and, and we keep talking about $70,000 in seven years from now. We're saying that because of the condition that it's in now. If you went for an option where you did replace it, you would probably get your resurfacing done less than that because now you have the new surface. So I want everyone to keep that in mind. It's not 70, 75,000 on any surface that you have there, it's 70, 75,000 because the surface that we currently have. And of course, we don't know the inflation of prices and labor and all that stuff too, so. fourth time for sure that we've talked about it and, and I know it's been brought up in every single meeting that it's seventy thousand dollar temporary fix with no warranty. Right? That's the whole seven. I listened to the voicemail of the guy who came and looked at it and I said, How long would you expect? Because he said there's no warranty. I said, How long ballpark what would you expect? He said he said five years if you're really picky, seven to eight for sure. If you're not picky, ten. You know, is his guess. So it's what we're hoping for. Has there been um, any reference checks on the surface itself? Yeah, I called White Bear Lake High School was the one that I talked to, and they they said it's a it's a good option instead of ripping them out. It's not perfect, but it's a good option. Brenda, what were you going to say? Well, so we we re resurfaced after seven years, and then now it's been ten years. So I mean, we could assume that it could last another seven years, or we could take a risk that it would. That's the average. We could, but it probably wasn't in that bad a shape that number of years ago either. This yeah. is in yeah. pretty rough shape. It's really bad. It would have been seven years old when we last did it. 
which they're 10 years old, it's only 17. I sometimes think about, too, where the, if, if it wasn't for the safety issues with practice now, and, and if you could manage to do the tennis meets someplace else, would you give it a year to see what type of fundraising you could do and see how close you are to that amount to do everything? You know, what are the options with the city possibly and talking to other groups and is there not a possibility that next year something like this could be done based upon the funds that were raised? I have a question for Derek. Do you, how long did it take you guys to, to raise that amount of money? The 40000 The 40000 for the elementary playground? Well, overall it took us about two years. Okay. And that was because we needed to research fundraisers get them on board, uh, okay. you know, have discussions about it. But really we raised it in one year. Okay. You know, it was it was actually three weeks uh, that we raised it. But, you know, again, it's an entire elementary school. Right. But, yeah. I think the idea is $250,000 without going up for a bond. How did we raise that money initially to build them out there? As part of a, another yeah, part of a construction project that yeah. was part of a bond. Yeah, I guess my question would be, you know, we're, we're still, even though we had the $45,000 built in the budget based on numbers from 2015, we're still 27500 short, but we've already cut eighty eight five out of the curriculum to balance the budget. Where do we come up with the other twenty seven five? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the principal's desks and chairs can go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I understand the right size and we reduce budget, but we face that every year. You know, if next year we face another reduction or, or a correction and you need to resurface the parking lot, do we put that on hold? Or if, we, if a chiller goes out, do we not fix that? Or, you know, so there's always going to be the yin and the yang of the, this is what we need and this is what we've got. I guess I, I'm reading this over and, and looking at the right size, and, and I don't discount what the principals are saying in the budget cuts, but to me it is really almost two different issues completely. And I think we've felt and I think you and I have talked about this a couple of years ago, Jerry, we felt where when you don't take care of your facilities where they should be, what happens? They're going to fail. And they fail even more and they're more expensive. So I, I almost think this is two issues. I understand the, the, the finance is one and the curriculum and everything, but if we've got facilities that we have to maintain, and we're talking about periodic maintenance, and when you get right down to it, it's fixing things that aren't broken possibly before they break. And that saves money. So I, I, I'm just thinking that this, if we're going to keep it, I guess that's maybe one of the first questions. If we're going to keep tennis, and it's just like keeping the track, keeping the chillers, keeping everything else that's a part of the facilities, we should treat it like that then and put it in where it's going to be. If we're not going to keep it, then, yeah, don't spend any money on it. But I also think on a second note, if we're serious about getting this thing taken care of, and we're talking about fundraising, and the board feels that fundraising is appropriate, I suppose if we commit 75,000, 45 out of what we already have, and there's another 27, to me that says, there's your goal this year, fundraise 27,500, mm -hmm. and show how good this is. You know, do we and have and I would agree with that option. I don't That's know if we have to have the money fundraised before we do it or not. I'm just throwing it out there as a discussion. That's what I've been thinking, it's like, well, how committed is the community? Can they raise 27500 which it's less, but, you know, we might be, I don't know what kind of pool we'll have to draw from for that. You know, if we've got people in the community who want the tennis courts, we give them the opportunity. And we talked about that two years ago. Can we get the public to fundraise themselves because they do use it? Right. I think there's other organizations out there that are talking about it, too, that are looking at contributing, you know. But bear in mind, if we don't do it this summer, which would be, reality would be, we'd be lucky to have somebody come and resurface it before school starts. That's reality. Well, with this last guy, he, he has us penciled in. I told him I, that nothing is certain. He knew that we we're going to have this meeting and it very well could be shot down, but he allowed us to be penciled in because he knew that everybody wants it done by the second week in August. So, But if, if it doesn't happen this year, next year, if we decide to do it for next year, the costs are going to go up. Right. So keep that in mind. Oh. And, and to me, with ten and seven, uh, that's just that. I mean, if we're going to say every seven years, no matter what we do, we're going to be spending money, then we need to budget ten thousand a year for seven years for the next fix, and then ten thousand a year for the next seven, and that's just a continuous 
cycle, right? Of somehow. But we need to somewhere along the line we're gonna need to take that consideration for the track and for the fuel yeah. else as well. Well and yeah. And that's it's I mean it's kinda like the say. parking lot and everything else that needs to be redone. How do we put that in the facilities plan to say, okay, track is this year, parking lot's this year, tennis court makes sense. And on the twenty sixth you will see your five year right. um, it's actually six because you're adding this year on, but um, you know, you've got that all laid out and you'll see all that. I'm just real nervous that if we have forty-five thousand dollars, what we've been earmarking for several months. At one time, it was sixty-five thousand, and we had an immediate need. I'll, I'll close twenty. By this time next year, we won't have that forty-five. That would be guaranteed. There's, there's other things that pop up. So, I'm hearing what you're saying here for sure. Yeah, and I read the we rate size for athletics. I guess. Explain that a little bit more. What, how could or would, would Next it Next year, um, we know that we have a kindergarten of 66 and a first grade of around 74. We know that those sections will have to go to three. Um, it's just, it's right sizing. No one's, you know, we're not reducing, but you need to go with what your class sizes are. Um, with that, we have fallen to number seven in the HVL as far as um, size. We, ha we are not growing, you know. Um, and with that, typically schools our size, and even in the HVL currently, it's really hard to find teams that have tennis. And with us getting smaller and smaller, um, we know that we'll have two grade levels that will have to be right size, which usually means three sections. Uh, we also know that one athletic group usually goes along with that to right size everything. Um, you have to have enough athletes to have sports. That doesn't mean it's gonna be tennis. We have no idea of knowing. Um, I think you need to wait till next year. Um, but with what the money that came in this year at two and two percent, and your cross subsidy for special education being 404, it's gone. We haven't even entered negotiations yet uh, with teachers, and we know we're in a teaching crisis right now. So, um, by right sizing, what we mean is next year we will have to look at that. Everything has to be appropriate. You got 66 kids, and they're in four sections. We can't maintain that. So. Um, with that, we don't. We have too many sports for the number of students we have, but that is by no means mean it's tennis. I mean, that is a conversation you'll have to have next year. I think it's a, a conversation we should start now. Perhaps. Well, you know, what is but that's why we are starting. I mean, the yeah. conversation has been started that we know we're right sizing next year. Yeah. That if if Derek and Tim were here, they would tell you Jennifer's here. It's a lot of our conversation at admin. What will that look like? We are preparing a year out. Um, so yeah. I hope that answers your question. It, it does. I mean, there's no real answer yet for what this right size athletics look like. To me, that was kind of the curiosity and something that sounds like the whole process as far as how do we realign it to the size of our school district. And I'm just curious what that looks like. So, so okay. Can I say coaches, how dangerous is it out there right now on the courts? You want to play a match out there. It's okay to do some drilling out there, but I wouldn't have anyone play competitively. Can you can you really play to your potential and to get better if you're not? Well, you know what I'm saying. We, we got to do what we're provided with. So, yeah. And, yeah. That's what we have out there. So that's what we're going to do to practice on as best we can. What else do we have for the cause here? It, um, talk to. I guess I don't know the best best approach. Do we want to? See if the community is interested in fundraising. I guess I don't really know how you go about that. Well, I, I know that they would want to be added to your agenda to do that. I know we've got some great su tennis supporters in the room, and I know they know the rules. They can't go out and start <laughs> fundraising now, um, but they, I think they would be up for that. Well, our, but our timetable is somewhat limited here. If we don't get it done soon, or don't commit to getting it done soon as a board, we're going to have to wait. That's plain and simple, and then that whole dynamic again changes. So, I so will say that if you decide to do it this year, which is totally fine, uh, Dave knows that we will put off, um, we will have to take it from facilities. You can't go to another account, you can't start moving this around. Uh, so resurfacing of the um, uh, parking lots would have to be bumped down if, if you fund the whole thing, that would have to wait. Um, even if there's fundraising, they pay that back, then you could go ahead and do your um, resurfacing, but just know that this year, and like I said, on the 26th, you'll see the whole plan uh, laid out, but that would have to be reduced. 
And again, we're talking about um, the school handling this all internally themselves. Again, we need to continue our conversation with the city to see what, what type of commitment, if any, they can make to us. If we wait for that to happen, um, it'll be again next year because we can't ask them to just drop everything you're doing and commit to something. It would be nice to get a, a favorable review from them, at least to understand that they are willing to assist us, and that would be, um, I guess, channels that the superintendent would take over, at least getting conversation and, and, and seeing how willing they are to do that. But again, I'm just very nervous about that 45 because a third of it's started at 65, and um, will it be there when we need it? Yeah, and I'm not a bad man, but if you move forward with doing the project and go to the city look for a commitment, I guess the decision's going to have to be made, or we truly know what's going to happen, yes or no. <coughs> right now, it's not committal, as you say, because we have nothing to really commit to. If the district were to commit, then we know if the city's truly really going to commit to that. True. If they go, well, let's wait well, another year, they, okay, we told you, then you told us your commitment is yeah. you're not doing it. Initially, they paid 10%, basically. They paid 50000 250000 so if we need 25000 27000 they'd have to go to spend I mean, if we were going to ask them for 10 percent, we would ask them for 5,000. They paid us 50. Yes, 20 percent. Okay. You said they paid us 50,000. 50,000 up to up to 50. Back in 2000. And the thing you have to keep in mind. I mean, I I feel for them too. They're in the same exact situation. I mean, if you were at their their meeting last night, I mean, they're they're struggling too. They're trying to make things to meet up too. So. Um, I will say, Member Abadil, who's here tonight, she um, was really good and resourceful at giving us some grants that we can look into. The problem we run into grants is resurfacing is considered upkeep. Um, what they love to give grants to is new facilities, you know, boys and girls clubs and starting something. Uh, Jake and I were really excited because there was one I thought was going to be perfect, but it has to be enclosed. You know, they like those year-round type facilities. There is some really great money out there for tennis. I mean, I was actually really surprised. But as far as a resurfacing, I mean, they act like this is just no big deal. It's really hard to find anything. Um, because what I felt I heard from the city was, go find some funds and we'll, we'll help match it maybe, depending on how much you could get. It looked like we could get a $20,000, uh, uh, yeah, $20,000 if we were gonna do the whole thing over again, because that could be considered new construction. Um, but with it just going to this resurfacing. So I do want to stand up for them. They were very supportive in the fact that maybe there's some matching funds out there. Go see what you can get. And like I said, they want new, they love boys and girls clubs. They love, you know, so much. Um, tennis probably has more money than other organizations, but not for what we're doing here. And 20% of 75,000 would be 15,000. So they can give us 5,000 or 15,000. And that's why I'm just saying that I, the, when we went to Public Works, what I heard was if we could get some, maybe they would match. So um, I think it would be great yeah, to go back. Yeah, it's a match. I think it would be worth going to them and, you know, if the fire department is donating 2500 and and maybe some other organization gets another 2500 and we went in with 5000 yeah. asking them to match that 5000 would be very realistic. I think that sounds better than coming in and saying, hey, you want to pay a third, because um, they're really struggling with their budget as well, so. So if we did get that, then where would we come up with the other? Well, like I said, we would have to, um, Dave would have to pick which lot he wants to do. Um, the nice thing about doing all your lots at one time, um, just like anything in your home, you put shingles on half your house, you've got to call the company back to the next year to do the other side. I mean, it just, it always works out well if you do it all at once. Um, and we are, I think, tagging up the same time the city is doing some of their resurfacing, so the equipment's already here. Or not sure if we're aligning that or not, but Dave would have to hold off on the resurfacing of the entire parking lot. Well, How bad wise. are the parking lots? Bad. Bad. How much we have budgeted for the I parking lots? Um, seventy-five. Yeah, for seventy-five for but, the parking lots. But we already have forty-five earmark for the tennis courts. Right? Yeah, I'm so saying he why, could do why part of cut back that if, if obviously the money up front is going to have to come out of the district. Mm -hmm. So if he's earmarked for 75000 if he ended up only getting 
43,000 or whatever, and that number ends up being. I mean, it's not like he couldn't do some of the resurfacing. He maybe just couldn't do all the resurfacing. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say, yeah. is that he'd have to decide which parking lot he wants to do. Yeah. Yep. I would almost be with them splitting it so the next time they need to resurface, we might be able to break that up into smaller size chunks. Instead of having the whole 75 pounds, you could do two parts every time over. I know it's not like a roof, because that's connected and joined, but you do one parking lot one year, a couple years later do another parking lot, when those come due again, that's like when you place all your windows, your furnace, and your AC in them, they all go at the same time. You can stagger them every 10 years. Of course, you get behind with it. Can you get behind with it where it's oh, like, okay, sure. now this damage is done? You know, that's I what I worry about. It. Then you got something going on like the tennis courts. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think you need a more clear understanding of exactly the conditions of the parking lot before you make that decision. Um, you know, I have pretty detailed bids. I have photos. I have things like that. Um, I agree with what you said, Rob. If we have it, we should maintain it. I, I completely, I, you know, if you don't, it gets worse and worse. In my eyes, in the facilities, what's going to be the worst ripple effect and how are these costs going to increase if we don't do them? Um, I want everything done on a regular preventative maintenance schedule. That's my deal. I would love that. Um, but I have to look at what's getting the most use. Where are most people? I mean, and I'm not trying to compare a parking lot between a tennis court. They're two totally different things. But how many people are coming in our school every single day, elementary, high school? How many dump trucks? How many deliveries? That effect is going to be significant compared to people playing tennis on the courts, not making light of the fact that they need to be done. But I think we need to take a serious look at what needs to be done and what the costs are. I'm just concerned with um, that particular subject with the parking lots. I'm just concerned, that's all. I can't schedule them until we... Okay. Nothing. to get them done before school because that would have been in the new budget. Yeah. And you know the option to be able to do partial, yes, that don't get me wrong, that is an option to be able to not do them all. It's just a matter of piecing it together, um, redoing the bids because you gotta understand when you're bidding these things out, if you're bidding out a whole project, you're gonna get quite a bit of a discount compared to this little bit here, this little bit here. It changes everything. Um, which is fine. We can do that. I'm not. I'm not against that. It's just prioritizing where do we need to start this if we're going to piece it out. It can be done. Even bigger than that is um, like GoFundMe projects mm -hmm. are people from all over the country that really support the idea of tennis in small towns and mm -hmm. kind of growing grassroots things. So. Um, something that we don't typically do for our the fundraising that we think of in Cannon Falls, I would love for them not to necessarily go directly to our community because we're going to have those people come forward um, anyway. But I think doing something like a GoFundMe, you'll have tennis organizations putting money in there. How do we know that the people out there see that there's a need? You know, the right people you'd say would come. It's GoFundMe, and I think people in the room know what I'm talking about. It's, it's very effective. Yeah. There's people, they get notifications yeah. every day. Uh -huh. um, I, I belong to a couple GoFundMe, like horse rescue, those type of things. You'll get an email all the time on, if you click the areas that you're concerned about. Um, so tennis people around the country, around the world, get your, your GoFundMe. And it goes very local, too. Mm -hmm. you know? spreads a lot with Facebook and things like that if you do something like that. Mm -hmm. We try not to have teachers in our local group do that because it's, you know, we have the Ed Foundation that's so supportive and the PTO that's so supportive. But it's just an idea. Mm -hmm. But if it's something specific, like the tennis, that might be an option. Red Wing just did that with a scoreboard. Can't remember how much it was, and they're currently doing it for football uniforms too. Yeah, Go using GoFundMe? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so what you'll have is football organizations that will go ahead and people donate that don't even know where Red Wing, Minnesota is. Well, again, if this, was, if this was just a school issue, I would say we put it on the back burner. We need to satisfy them the, uh, the greater need, if you will, and there is a need for the uh, resurfacing parking lot. 
but we're also talking about a city need here, and, a, and uh, again, we present this to our community as a community's tennis court, not as the high school court, where the IMC belongs to us. Uh, the tennis court belongs to the community in a lot of ways, because that's what we've committed to them when we built our facility. Come see us, come use our facility. So I, I just want to make sure that uh, people totally understand that this is part of the part of our greater community here. And I understand that too, but when the tennis courts went away from down by the swimming pool that the city owned and helping us here, you know, with that being said, it's part of the community. Well, the city is part of the community. Mm -hmm. Right. Then, then there should be a little bit of trade-off. That's my opinion. That's only my opinion. I think there's a lot of people. I mean, I know Mayo has brought it up. I was over there for Rotary, and someone brought it up. You know, there's a, there's a lot of people that want to make sure tennis is around it. I don't play, but I know a lot of people that do. Are there any other options that anyone has ever brought up other than these three? Or is this really it? Um, I think that summarizes what the facility could think of. Well, there were some options for some things to put on there, but from our understanding, you can't compete on those surfaces, the like the tiles. Oh, that's right. We did, we so we did look at something else. That we looked into because I was really excited. Eight things had it, but they said recreational use only, and that's what the high school began. Yep. That's right. Well, the purpose here tonight was to bring us all up to date on on what the facility committee knows and what what our operations people know. And uh, I think we're starting to morph into uh, redundant conversation here. So um, this will be part of our regular agenda item on 626, and it'll get more discussion there and probably in public forum people will speak to it as well. Maybe there'll be conversation with city by then where they'll show an interest in the project, even if it's a yes, we're interested. At least we know where they're going with it. Um, but we can continue this conversation at our next meeting, I think. Well, excuse me, I would, I'd like to make sure that we do have some conversation with the city before our next meeting, before we vote on this. Is there, you know, could we attend a city council meeting or something like that? That was, that was last night. Yeah. Um, you can ask to get that on the agenda. Typically, they ask you to go through their committees, just like ours. You know, they ask you to go through the technology committee or the or uh, meet with one of their committees. Or something. So I believe it's under public works. That's what I've typically done. Um, Cedar is here tonight. When is the next public works meeting? Next you know? Tuesday. This coming Tuesday, six days. Okay. Oh, that would be good. Yeah. So I could I could call and see if we can get on their agenda um, and recap. And I can make sure you can be on the agenda. Oh, that'd be great. Thank you. So okay. we can, I can make sure I'm there next Tuesday for that and just kind of see. I mean, like I said, I really, they have been good about saying we can maybe do some matching. They've never committed to anything, but I think they want to show effort, you know, all the way around, so. Would it be possible to have someone go out there and take a look at them as well? Maybe they have already, you know, maybe a city engineer or, or someone, administrator or Yeah, something. I believe Ron has been out there. Okay. Um, Tom's been in and out a million times. Um, I don't know. We could take a little tour too sometime if you want to see him. Um, I know that Ron has been out there. He's the main person. We do have a, a busy agenda next week. I, I think I saw preliminary numbers were down to. Uh, we took a few off. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> Would you call it morbidly obese? <laughs> well, you told skeleton. me it was a, it no, was a skeleton, skeleton agenda the... that looked obese to me. <laughs> so. Um, you know, as, as we go towards this next meeting, we're, we're going to make a decision. Uh, and if the board decides to go with resurfacing them, great. Um, but if we don't, something to think about in the meantime is I think I would need some direction. If we hold off for fundraising or anything, what do I do? We've talked about a liability. I mean, do we continue? I mean, to, to keep them open if we, don't, if we decide not to resurface right now? Um, and I think that should be part of the discussion as we're, you know, if we do make a decision, if they're not resurfaced, what do we then do with them? Do we keep them open? Do we close them? Do we keep half of them open? What, what do we do? Padlock them is what you're saying. Person. They are closed yeah. right now. The south side is locked up. No, it's not right now. I thought at our meeting. I we, walked into it. Just I walked into it. <laughs> no, but we did were we, going to, and did then I was given direction to keep everything open. 
Oh. And so it's open as of right now, and that's my concern. Sure, because at our facility meeting, I thought we, we left that meeting saying we were going to lock the south side. Is this a liability for the, the district of commu it is. community members? That's why I said they, I, when we left that meeting, um, the direction we had was we were going to lock the south side. Which is fine. Um, I just need to know what direction uh, to go in, depending on how the board votes is all. Um, Well, that was kind of the issue that came up. We're using them for practice, and we're using them, and then all of a sudden we're just going to close them. And well, I'm just that, kind of ahead. between a rock and a hard place here on the direction on what to do. We, the plan would be, if they're going to practice, to just use that north side. To not, when we left that meeting, we did say that, and then things kind of changed again a little bit. Yeah, but I didn't hear that second part. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, so, yeah, it would be use that north side, which is better but it's not good it's getting worse yeah. by the day so for our insurance purposes that. it would be wise to lock them They're just secure them lock them can you lock I them take the nets down i'll oh. take the nets down yeah yeah i'm just trying to keep the skateboarders out <laughs> okay a lot of conversation, a lot of good conversation. We'll probably be better off than when we started, but still a lot of decisions to be made. So, I would look for a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. <laughs> motion by Brenda, seconded by Jerry. Folks, we welcome you to the 626 meeting. More conversations, public forum is available, and uh, I'm sure we'll have more information toward this, both financial and, and otherwise. So, there's been a motion and a second on the floor. Any other discussion? All in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 Opposed? We're closed.